have an idea of what I want to do. I'm going to get a new TV, I'm going to get a shelf, I'm going to put some systems up, and it's going to be awesome. So, I'd say give me about three weeks. Three weeks to a month, I'm going to have an awesome room. And I'm going to invite you back to take a look at it. Oh. Yeah, I, I admit, it's been a while since, uh, since I said part two was coming. But you're going to be glad that I waited so long because, I don't know, let's just do this freaking room tour. <laughs> So here we are, my custom made NES slash Super Nintendo slash 64 slash just miscellaneous stuff on the bottom shelf. Now Chris wanted to uh, build this uh, for me, he came up with the design, I really wanted something kind of old school, mm, kind of looks like something that you would find at a KB Toys and buy stuff out of. Little did I know when we designed this that <laughs> I would find something like that. Of course not, not anything clearly this big. So I just definitely wanted to have that, that sort of old school look. So obviously the pegboard was a must and the lights, the LED lights, which will not fade the games because they're LEDs, uh, are placed in there. And I can change them to one set color. Right now they're flashing uh, just kind of to create some visual interest. But right, usually I just kind of have it set on a, a whitish blue. This is my Game Boy section. Uh, all the game, and the, the, these are out just because I've been playing them and stuff and I have <laughs> too lazy to file them back but the actual games and stuff are in this folder uh, like baseball cards you can see down there uh and obviously down here is ds and some wii and psp stuff so that's that's the game boy section good old nes i got there's the action 52 that jason lambert gave me at MacFest and you know, here's, here's all the games <laughs> you've seen us accumulate over the last five years. Well, a good portion of them. You know, a lot of stuff that you see right here is, it was things that bought we bought before the show even started. Um, one, here's the infamous Flintstones. So there's, there's that. I'll just pick out some highlights of stuff, stuff that I like. Um, Heavy Barrel, not a lot of people talk about that one. I really, really like that one. It's a good co-op one, co one too. Um, Power Blade, I really loved this one growing up. It's one of the games that I really loved that we never actually owned. Uh, and I loved it. Uh, Godzilla, despite what people say, I, I like this game. Uh, G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe 2, uh, a couple of other good, a couple of other good ones. Gunsmoke, Gunsmoke is a really good one. I see all the Mega Man ones. I, I know people just like Mega Man 2 and 3, but I like I like all of them. I think they, they are all pretty awesome. Metal Storm, one of my favorites growing up as well. Mighty Final Fight. Mighty Final Fight is actually a... Um, it's, you know, it's not Final Fight on the Super Nintendo, of course, but it's still a really damn good beat-em-up on the NES. Uh, Jackie Chan's another good one. I like this one. It's a good game. I have a lot of nostalgia for Par Simpson versus the Space Mutants. Even though it's not that great of a game, I still have a lot of nostalgia for it. Shadow of the Ninja, excellent, excellent side-scrolling action game. Uh, I recommend it. Here's the rest of the NES stuff right here. And I got them in alphabetical order. Um, and then I have like all the like um, color dreams and, and, and Tengen and stuff like that all kind of together um, as well. And here I have Famicom and Super Famicom and imports and homebrews and, and stuff like that on this shelf. And of course I got a couple of boxes here, Chip and Dale, Chip and Dale 2. Um, two really awesome <laughs> games. Well, I played that one as a kid, but never never that one. But it's, it's not as good as the first in my opinion, but it's still, I mean, it beats out 80% of what's on the NES library. And of course we got Super Nintendo here. Uh, these are just not filed in because uh, we were playing them. So I haven't, I've been kind of lazy. I want to put in some of this stuff back up. And then, uh, yeah, they extend over here. And, and then I've got some boxes of some of my favorite Super Nintendo games. Usually I only collect the boxes of my favorite games. And so uh, this is definitely a favorite of mine, this one as well. And of course it's Mario Kart, so. 
This small section underneath it is the 64 stuff. And it's not very big because I'm just not a huge 64 fan. And so I haven't really put much stock into it now. I'm, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with the way it is right now. And I got the <laughs> Super Scope uh, all set right here. And I got on hooks like some factory sealed games. I got Gremlins on the six, on the Commodore 64, Wario Woods sealed that somebody actually sent us on uh, Stuff People Sent Us episode. And a factory sealed F-Zero that I got at MAGFest a few years ago. And obviously I'm not going to open them up because I have them loose, so why would I? But yeah, there's there's those. And over here on the wall, I got one of them. I think this is my favorite poster out of Nintendo Power. I got it framed. <laughs> Manhattan Project. And then um, up here, Contra, which OK Chief gave me, which was awesome. And I don't even know if you guys remember, but I got that on an episode once. And then up here, I got, <laughs> for some random reason, I got a Scout Walker box. I got it, Toy Base 10, Oklahoma City. And boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes. Also want to mention this is the uh, Max and the Satellite that we got in Season 2. Or I got in Season 2. And I also want to give a good, juicy, wet shout out to Dan. who's a fan of the show who did these decals for me. Uh, he just said, hey, I want to do some decals for you. One, he saw that we were uh, building these shelves and they turned out amazing. So I'll put all the, you know, the info down here. So if you are interested in something like that, you can give him, uh, give him a holler. And down here at the bottom, I just have loose consoles that, you know, I can only have so many consoles hooked up to a television. I just only have so much room. So if I'm not using a console, I will put it up on the shelf. And yes, I know Genesis is a staple in any game room, and I, I have the XI hooked up, so I don't need that, act, the actual Genesis itself. Um, I have a lot of Ataris. I, I just now re realized that's, that's my third Atari. That's pretty ridiculous. They keep multiplying in my closet when I think I don't have any. Uh, so yeah, 5200, um, Magnavox Odyssey 2. Uh, we got a 3DO down there. That's the 3DO that I found on an episode. You're going to see that a lot. A lot of stuff that I found on the episodes right here. Uh, there's a box clone console. Uh, Atari XE, which uh, we had growing up. Not a lot of people know about. It's not bad. It's not a bad system. Um, PS3 stuff. Uh, we got uh, Atari 400 computer. Uh, I mean, just... <laughs> You name it, I think I have it. There's another, there's another version of the Sega CD. All right, so coming back around this side, we have literature. <laughs> we have some Nintendo Powers. I have some of the earlier editions in this little magazine rack right here, so they're they don't get kind of screwed up taking them in and out because you know the staples and stuff and those like to come out. Uh, I've got a bunch of miscellaneous manuals and little posters and stuff and. Uh, strategy guys, there's Game Pro magazines in there. There's all sorts of stuff, uh, electronic gaming, uh, and then of course uh, Nintendo Power. Tons of Nintendo Power. I got that little separator there for the stapled, stapled ones. I got Retro Gamer magazine, which is a good magazine from the UK, and just a bunch of other miscellaneous uh, stuff on there as well. All right, so here is my Atari ST collection. Now this sign was bought at the, the electronic store that Chris got the Sega CD case, but it was on a separate day than when we filmed. And when I saw that sign, I knew I had to have it because good God, is it awesome? That's vintage right there. That's vintage. And so these are some of my, I only collect the games that I really have a connection with and grew up playing for the most part. So all the games here that you see are ones that I owned or we owned or copied the floppy from growing up, which we did because actually the kid across the street from me had an Atari ST too, so he would rent some, copy the games, and then yeah, we'd copy them too. So that's that's oh, and then there's Cat. Hi, Cat. Hello there. How are you? You want to play Atari ST? You can't do that. You're just a cat. Yeah, I know. It sucks, doesn't it? Well, honestly, I can't play it either because either there's something wrong with the disk drive in this thing or all my games have disk rot and I haven't decided which is which. Uh, but anytime I put a disk in, it will read it, but it'll say data corrupt or it will say 
just can't read it or it'll show that there's nothing in the folder. So the actual disk drive mechanics work and move and stuff, but no, no game will actually boot up inside of it. And that includes this bubble bobble that I had. And I loved this game. This is one of my favorite on the system. And this was factory sealed, but I really wanted to play it. So I opened it up and a brand new disc that had never been played. And it's still apparently had fucking disc rot. Uh, I heard that there's workarounds. Uh, one of them being a SD card uh, reader that somebody has made that you can put it into the back of the system and it will read ROMs off the SD card and it will actually think that it's a disk drive. And here I have just a collection of random Star Trek games because I love Star Trek. Cat, you're gonna kill yourself. And down here, I have vintage Sears magazines where you can see what the prices were on retro games in the early 90s. And here's my Super Nintendo sign. I know it's blasphemous sitting there, but I haven't found out exactly where I want to put it yet. And voila. <laughs> it's the KB Toys N64 display cabinet. Now up here at the top, I decided I wanted to make it a shrine to Super Nintendo. So what I did is I took the box and then I put the boxes of all my favorite games growing up. Uh, I got my Legend of Zelda Link to the Past here. And obviously you, you all know what games these are and how awesome they all are. <laughs> I don't need to explain to you. But all these were games that uh, we had in the four, five years of growing up with Super Nintendo that were just staples in our collect my collection and Chris's as well. Me and Chris just played the hell out of uh, Super Street Fighter 2 and Mario All Stars and uh, Contra 3 Co-op. So this this was a, this was our gaming for about three to four years, pretty much. And down here, I actually installed some LED lights. And let me go down the iris here. Uh, that's my factory sealed Gremlins 2 on the NES. Amazing game, one of my top ten on the system. And of course, some other really cool boxed gems. Uh, and I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with the cabinet. I know I didn't want to fill it just with 64 stuff because, well, it's not my system. So, I don't know. I thought this was like a really cool alternative. Just fill it with badass shit. Uh, some more badass shit are Transformers. So I got a bunch of vintage G uh, G1 Transformers and uh, GoBots and stuff too. So some GoBots. Uh, down here, G.I. Joe shelf, which, damn it, this vehicle was actually up on that uh, thing, whatever you call it, and it fell off. And it was a horrible accident that just took place. But yeah, that's my G.I. Joe stuff. And here we got miscellaneous stuff. There's a Voltron, there's a B-Wing in the box, uh, and some Ninja Turtle figures. Uh, Technodrome. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I wanted. I wanted to make a toy slash game cabinet out of this, and I don't know. I think I like it. All right, so this is where it gets a little bit messy because this is the played-in section, and no, I didn't clean it up before doing this video because it's just going to get dirty again. Uh, a bunch of random games that we've been playing. Now I got my old school television here. I got my newer one, and then I got uh, a really good Sony tr uh, Trinitron. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, but. I have systems hooked up to each, obviously the old school one I got the Atari and, and the Intellivision and stuff hooked up to and the PS2 is hooked up to the the bigger one and then all the the um, the other systems are hooked up to this TV right here. And you can see what we've been playing recently. Um, little Samson just chilling right here like it's a a coaster. But anyway, yeah, that's, that's what we've been playing here. Um, I made this Atari rack and to put all the Atari games that I have on it. Uh, just wanted something really cool. And that's another sticker done by Dan. Thank you again. So you can see, and it's not just Atari, it's uh, TI-99 and, and television and Atari XE and all that other kind of stuff. All that kind of the, the same uh, generation of stuff that I, I put on there. And you can see some of 
the games that I like to highlight, like the, like the the All Star Elite games on the system, which amazing game on this on this. And it's, I'm not just saying that because I'm a Gremlins fan. It's just a, a really freaking good game. And I got some of my favorite boxes, uh, so of some of my favorite games growing up. Um, a lot of it just from nostalgia. A lot of it just because they're good games. Uh, Air Fortress I really liked growing up. Little Mermaid. Um, of course, of course, Star Wars games and Ninja Turtle games, and then the, you know. Uh, this this one was an Atari ST game that I really loved, uh, Batman: Caped Crusader, and of course Burger Time, my favorite game on the Intellivision. And all this stuff is still under construction. I need to put some trim on here. Uh, here's some NECA toys. Here's Gremlins 2 figure. It's supposed to look like the actual game itself. Uh, same here, Batman, which is really cool. I like that kind of stuff. Um, I got more boxes at the top. Some of the bigger boxes. God, I have a wall of boxes right here on top. But this is kind of the uh, the all-star sort of game museum, I guess you could say, right here. I know some of you are asking, well, where's the Genesis? Where's the Genesis? Ah, here's the Genesis. And yes, I haven't neglected the Genesis or the Master System. I got plenty of games for that. Uh, Sega CD. Sega Saturn, modest, very, very modest collection, but it's it's there. Uh, Box 32X, Intellivoice, um, a bunch of random, like Commodore 64, IBM computer games um, right here. Just I, that kind of stuff I'll never play because I don't have a system set up to play it, but I just like collecting it because of the cover art and I don't know, the nostalgia. Of, I just have a thing for that sort of thing. Um, and up here is some 3DO stuff and more NES boxes. Now all these are empty. They're empty boxes. I got all my games on the shelf so they're easily accessible. But I still love having the boxes because the boxes are part of it and just the artwork and all that other stuff. So, oh by the way, I don't care what anybody says, Jaws is a good. <laughs> so yeah, NES, empty NES boxes for right now. Until I need the space and then I'll probably file some of the crappier ones away so I can make, make some room. Uh, more Cheetah Men, Cheetah Men 2, the creation. Uh, we got Super Nintendo boxes, and those are empty as well. And some empty N64 boxes. And we got some Magnavox Odyssey stuff. Conquer the World. We got Intellivision. A uh, bunch of Intellivision games in the box. And some Atari games in the box as well. Obviously, this is kind of a mess because it's set up to do streaming. We've been doing a lot of streaming. In fact, I'll be doing some a lot more streaming in the future. Uh, Retron is a good streaming system. It's also a good system for capturing um, high quality game footage. So that's mainly what I use that for. Uh, and then one of these is Woods, that's Woods laptop. That's our laptop, that's Woods laptop. I don't know what it's still doing here. And this is my VHS shelf. That's another thing I'm very nostalgic for is VHS's. So this is not all of them by any means, but because we did a video on VHS and I haven't actually refiled the the ones that we used for the video, but you can see uh, that I have that. I'm really jealous of James Rolfe's uh, little VHS mock uh, mock uh, uh, rental store setup that he has in his basement. If I could do that, I would because uh, me and him are kindred spirits on the whole of VHS nostalgia. Uh, going to rental stores and all that was some of the highlights of my freaking youth. And of course, I got the Vet. I say of course, like you know, gotta have it. But uh, Vetrix, uh, Star Wars games on top of the Vetrix for no reason. But yeah, Vetrix, amazing system, uh, a must in anyone's collection if you can get one. All right, so now we're gonna come around here. This is the, just a miscellaneous shelf full of uh, GameCube and PS2 games. And cool Pac-Man poster, by the way. And then right here, we have PS1 and uh, Turbo Graphics, PC Engine games, PC Engine CD games. Uh, nah, I, it's not. I don't have a lot because it's such a freaking expensive system to collect for. But uh, I do have some really good ones there. All right, so that is pretty much my game room, but. Before we end this video, I wanted to show you a couple of other things that, yeah, I don't know, you might be interested in. All right, so right here is where we do all our filming, green screen, 
There's the lightings. Um, now in this closet right here, uh, full of board games. Full of board games, and I know the lighting here sucks. So full of board games. Uh, and not only that, plastic models. I, I was big into plastic models growing up too, so. Uh, bunch of board games and stuff in here. Um, I, I just got an obsession with board games. Arcade Mania, I got that on the show. And uh, here's miscellaneous video equipment that we use. Um, for the show as well. Uh, tubs full of video equipment that we need. Um, and here's controllers and hookups and power adapters and all that other stuff. Uh, the, a box, the box to the Atari ST, uh, the Fireball Island that I got on the show, and uh, let's see, box with a Wii, box of the laptop. Yeah, so this is basically just a, a big closet full of uh, miscellaneous uh, things up here. <laughs> And there's more things in the attic that I just don't have room for. But I don't feel like going up there. Do I? No, I don't feel like going up there. It's nothing, it, trust me, it's nothing exciting. It's just extra boxes and stuff like that. This is just like my, my entire place, man. It's just like 80s and 90s threw up. This is my office. This is where I edit Game Chaser episodes. Uh, and I just have homages to pretty much everything that I enjoy just scattered out the entire place. Uh, vintage Imperial Walker, um, another box, uh, Burger Time uh, over here. We got uh, it's my bookshelf full of awesome, amazing books. Um, Retro Palooza poster for some reason. Still don't know why that's there. There's all my Star Wars bo books. I was really heavily into the expanded universe before they destroyed it. Uh, Millennium Falcon, Tie Fighter, a vintage box of Batman cereal. Um, amazing stories. I mean, I really love pop uh, pop art. I think that's pulp art. What, I don't know, what do you call it from the 50s and 40s and stuff? And poster, obviously, of Super Mario 3 and Imperial Shuttle. Uh, more toys. God, I'm such a nerd. Up here at the top, we got vintage uh, G.I. Joe vehicles, Night Raven. I got that on Toy Chasers. I'm still waiting to get my Empire Strikes Back poster because my the one I currently have is way too big, and my desk is a mess. There's my new D, uh, computer that I used to edit Game Chaser episodes on. Uh, it's a beast compared to what I was using, so I'm happy with that. And now, for the crown jewel in my office, it's my it's my Gremlins. Uh, Shrine, I guess you would call it, but it's pretty much anything Gremlins that I own that's not a, a video game, it's in here. So, this, this is, I really like this. This is all the NECA figures, and uh, man, I just wish they had come out with more because these things are freaking amazing. My back Gremlin fell down, that sucks. Uh, we've got Spider Gremlin, and sorry again, the lighting in here is, is horrible, but I'm sure you can kind of see what's going on. And uh, mostly up here is the vintage stuff. Now, most this stuff down here is newer stuff. This is vintage. So anything I come across, anytime I come across vintage uh, Gremlins related stuff, I'll pick it up. <laughs> doesn't pretty much doesn't matter what it is. Hope that you enjoyed this video. It's been a long time in the making, and we will be doing game room tours for everyone on the show. So stay tuned for that. Oh, yes.